It's easy to forget that there were once no personal computers just a little less than two generations ago. The handheld computer and communications device that you probably have with you at all times is also, just barely, a decade or less old itself. The earliest computers were behemoths and more akin to calculators living inside of large government, university, and corporate installations. That first generation of fully electronic computers used vacuum tubes to perform their calculations. They acted as binary switches to represent bits, on or off, or as ones and zeros. Giant vacuum tube filled computers were soon replaced by computers with transistors inside, thus establishing the second generation of computers. The invention of the transistor had made it possible for smaller and faster computers to be developed, as they were much smaller than tubes, used far less power, and didn't have heat problems. The third generation of computers was defined by the next significant innovation, the integrated circuit. An integrated circuit could replicate hundreds, then thousands, and more of transistors onto one tiny piece of silicon, known as a chip. These chips established what is now generally referred to as the semiconductor industry. Naturally, as this market continued to evolve, computers got even faster, as well as smaller and smaller. Where computers were once room-sized, now there were some only about the size of a couple of refrigerators. For around 20 years, the central processing unit, or CPU, and main memory cabinets of the early computers were known collectively as mainframes. However, these smaller third-generation installations came to be known as mini-computers. Within its limited market, the computer industry boomed throughout the 1960s and into the 1970s. It would seem only logical that the steady growth and the continual downsizing of circuitry created the next category, but that is not what really happened. The microcomputer was not named so because they were even smaller than mini-computers, but rather because of the vitally important revolutionary integrated circuit contained within. This new type of chip, the microprocessor, was first produced commercially in 1971, and it would become part of the catalyst of the personal computer revolution. The microprocessor was the invention of a CPU on a chip, and this became the foundation for all personal computers, even your smartphone. In 1975, with the help of demand from electronic hobbyists, the microcomputer boom was born. The first mass-produced, commercially successful personal computer contained just the bare essentials for computing. A microprocessor, the CPU, RAM, the memory, and basic input-output capabilities. From this first humble microcomputer, a spark was lit and the personal computing revolution began. This established the fourth and current generation of electronic computers, but also the first tier of personal computing, the desktop computer. As desktop computing evolved and matured, they developed into consumer devices, and then later into corporate and creative ones. By the early 1980s, customers wanted portability with their computers, so the market answered first with luggables, then with laptops, which are now more commonly known as notebook computers. These are the second tier of personal computers. It would take another decade or so before notebooks could compete with desktops in the realm of performance, and then not until 2008 until notebook computers outsold the desktops. Where once laptops were the limited companion computing devices, even more portable yet more limited handheld computing devices began to appear in the mid to late 1980s. These were the first of a new category, a third tier of personal computing. The third tier would go through many iterations, evolving, then devolving into the organizer category, before arguably becoming firmly established with the release of the iPhone in 2007. It is an ironic truth that it ultimately was not the computer that became a phone, but the phone and PDA evolving into a computer. Now, smartphones are fully realized personal computers and can do just about anything that a desktop or notebook can do only limited by the realities of their screen size. Modern tablet computers started as an extension of the smartphone, but are now essentially a hybrid of both the second and third tier. So where did the Apple Newton fit in? Well, you might have missed it, but its place is just about in the middle of the evolution of handheld computing. 
It was way ahead of its time in many regards, and it influenced the third tier in numerous ways that most of us don't even realize. 